It's the NFL on EA Sports, and we've got a showdown in the AFC North. It's the Cincinnati Bengals and the Cleveland Browns, and it's coming up next on Madden Football. On a gorgeous late summer afternoon, it is time for football here at Cleveland Brown Stadium in downtown Cleveland, Ohio. Today, we've got a good one on tap in the AFC North as it'll be the Cincinnati Bengals taking on the Cleveland Browns. Brandon Gordon joined as always by my partner, Charles Davis. Uh, Charles, these Browns, no other way to say it. They took a step back last year. Now, what do you think that they need to do to get back to the playoffs while competing in a tough AFC North? They need to get back to the identity that their head coach established a couple seasons ago. A hard running game, consistent play from their quarterback, and then they have new management on the defensive side of the ball. They'll try and get after you in the pass rush. Meanwhile, for the visiting Bengals, it's a team that's been to the Super Bowl three times in their history, has never won it. But there's just a sense that this could be the year, and you don't disagree. I certainly do not, because go back two seasons ago, many thought it was a fluke that they got to the Super Bowl. Well, they came back the next year, and they got to the AFC Championship game, and were extremely disappointed they didn't get back to the Super Bowl. The pieces are in place. The confidence is high. Cade York set to do the honors here, and we are underway from Cleveland. And he won't get this to the 20-yard line as he's down at the 19. And the Bengals now set for their first possession, and it's pro bowler Joe Burrow who leads this offense in his fourth season now out of LSU. Burrow may be young in his career, but he's helping the Bengals to one of the best stretches they've ever seen. 12 wins last year, which matched the team record, and they made a conference championship game in back-to-back -back seasons for the first time ever. At the center of it all is the man they call Joey B. 35 touchdown passes last year and almost 4,500 yards. Just like that, it's a gain of 12 and a first down on their first play. I don't care who you put on him, he's going to be a handful in one-on-one -on -one throws. Yeah, right now, you're right. They're in man-to-man, -man, maybe need some safety help. I would say that'd be a good idea. Double-team him somehow. I'm going to have to make someone else beat me rather than let him shred my defense. They will throw on first down with Burrow. That's caught by the tight end, Irv Smith Jr. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. It's a pickup of 12. Second play in a row with a 12-yard gain. He's locked in early. Two nice first down completions to start. I like the fact that he's seeing the whole field early. Spreading it around a little bit in the early going. Now a three-time 1,000-yard rusher, Joe Mixon. And able to work about five yards out of this as he's taken down up near the 47. Not a huge play, but I think they're more than happy with how it turned out. Don't be surprised to see them revisit that call because there was a lane there for more than just five yards. Put it in your back pocket and break it out when you need it later. From the 47, it's second and five. Now it's Burrow. And that falls to the ground incomplete. A nice job of bodying him up defensively, and now it brings up third down. Excellent defensive effort to get to him and provide a little contact before the catch could be made cleanly. They come up now third and five following the incomplete pass. Now it's Burrow. And the Browns pressure gets to him that time and he's going to go down. It was Miles Garrett that time who got in there and brought him down. He found his way into the backfield and he simply would not be denied. But they say that life's all about opportunities, and that holds true when you're playing defense as well. How about him seeing that chance, making the most of it, did a great job of wrapping him up and bringing him down. Shreds the tackle. It'll be a 41-yard punt, give him five on the return. And the Browns will take over first and 10. And the Cleveland offense ready to go to work behind the three-time Pro Bowler Deshaun Watson in his second season now as a Brown, number seven overall. Just six games played for Watson in his debut season with the Browns, which really limited how much he could step into the franchise quarterback role for the team. 
but he gets a full slate to do so this season. Remember, his last year in Houston, over 4,800 yards. They expect excellence from him. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. Solid way to start the drive, 13 yards, picking up the first. And this was a nice example of an offensive coordinator scheming his guy open, just a little underneath route, just trying to free up some space, and it worked awfully well. Got him not just space, but plenty of room to run after the catch to pick up really nice yardage. On first and 10, Watson. Quick throw, he's got Amari Cooper. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. That's good for a Cleveland first down and 11-yard pickup. I think when they look at their offense, they think to themselves, weapons, weapons everywhere. And they want to move the ball around. They want to spread it to different people. But you absolutely know, they want to get this man involved as well. And that's what they just did on that play. Pretty nice work defensively there on the first down run as they hold him to a gain of a couple. They suspected that it was a power play up the middle coming at him, and boy, were they right. That defense got downhill in a hurry and limited them to just a couple on first down. This is second and eight. Now Watson. And oh, look at that, a diving catch. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Bengals 36. Just what the Browns needed there. Good for a gain of 17. When I played in the yard as a kid, I used to imitate the spectacular catches that I would see on TV. I don't think I ever imitated one quite that well. <laughs> Come on, give yourself some credit. No, I know better. What we just saw there, that was pretty special. On first down, they'll run with Chubb. And he'll fight forward maybe to the line of scrimmage, but that's all. And a tackle there by Jermaine Pratt. Nice job there defensively to clamp down because really, they've been on their heels this drive. Agreed, and they really needed that one for confidence, just to feel a little bit better. But I don't know if I would be daunted by them stopping me on one run. This drive has gone pretty well. I could come right back at them. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. Man coverage is certainly a staple of their defense, and it's built for plays like that, forcing that incompletion. Now play number seven of the drive as they're looking at a third and ten. Here's Watson. Dancing to it, and he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. Trey Hendrickson showing off his pass rush repertoire that time. Hendrickson dropped down to eight sacks last season, but don't get lost in that number. Still had three forced fumbles and remains a game record on the edge of Cincinnati's line. So on trots the field goal unit, and wow, this is going to be a challenge here. They spot it on the midfield stripe, so it is a 60-yard attempt here. And that one will be no good. He never had it online. It's well wide to the left, and this will remain a scoreless game. I don't care who you are. 60 yards is a very ambitious attempt. Hard to make even in practice in the best of conditions. And now, worst of all, you give the other guys the ball to start their drive at midfield. Cincinnati coming back onto the field here for their second drive. The defense got the better of them last series, forcing a punt. See if they make a few changes in the game plan here and try to get points out of this drive. First and 10. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. It's a gain of 13, and the Bengals have a first down. But one of the ways that quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play Never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. First down, here's Burrow. And this one complete to Smith. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. So the completion good for seven there. And that'll make it second down. Well, that Kevin Stefanski consulted with his guys above and they've told him throw that challenge flag. 
Did he keep those feet in bounds? That's the question they've got to decide. And I, I got to say, watching it in real time, it was awfully close. Yeah, it certainly looked like a heck of a catch because he didn't appear to bobble it, which could complicate things. But even with the benefit of replay, that's pretty tight. Well, here's the call. After review of the play, the ruling on the field stays. So the challenge there does not go their way. This will indeed remain a completed pass. From the 29, here's second and three. Burrow looking to pass. And the catch made. It's Tyler Boyd. And Boyd going to pick up a Bengals first down as he'll take this down to the 22-yard line. So the completion there, Charles, looking at this defense, certainly in for a tough task here this afternoon. What are some of the keys for them if they want to come out on top? Well, the first thing, partner, is they just allow the completion there. They don't want to get a string of those going. Let him get his confidence. Let him get into the rhythm of the game, the flow of the game, and all of a sudden, he's feeling like he can do no wrong. You want to really get after his timing a little bit, knock a few balls away, and make things uncomfortable for him, because if he feels relaxed, you are in for a tough afternoon. Boy, everything clicking on this drive. He's four for four now, and that throw, maybe the best of the bunch. This offense is really humming, and they pick up another first down. Here's Burrow setting up to throw it. Touchdown, Bengals! Joe Burrow with a touchdown connection to Tyler Boyd. And the Bengals get the upper hand as they're on the board first here this afternoon. Well, that's just how they drew it up, CD. His first read was there, got it to him quickly, and into the end zone. Absolutely excellent execution by all involved. And the coordinator, got to give him credit, found the perfect play call. Quarterback let it fly as soon as the target came free, and his guy made a nice catch. Just how you draw it up in practice and then execute it in the game. Extra point by McPherson, up and good, and it's now a 7 0 game. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. From his end zone, it's Demetric Felton. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. Second drive coming up here for Cleveland as they return to the field on offense. And they were in field goal range the last time out but couldn't connect. And it's early in the game, so I don't think that the confidence just goes entirely out of, you know, running your kicker back out there. But let's face it, some coaches have a little bit less patience for that than others. Let's see if they call the game differently now in terms of what they do on drives and not try and settle for field goals. Have to give some credit to the defender on that when he read all of his keys perfectly and got a great break on the ball and able to force that incompletion. Now a second and ten. Out of the gun, Watson. This short pass into the hands of Njoku. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. Second catch for him today, and it'll line up the first down. And what a nice example there of a tight end doing exactly what he needs to do. How about how he worked his way to the outside, made sure he secured the catch, and then anything after that, we count that as a bonus. And indeed, he gets enough for the first down. Watson on first down. Going out wide, finds Chubb, and he goes out right around the 39. It'll go down as a gain of six, and it's second down. Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice, safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back, let him create some space, and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense. To the air yet again, Watson. That's complete, it's Elijah Moore. His first catch, good for eight and a first down.
to throw is Watson. Oh, he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. Cheetah Bay Alusier with a pick. And the Bengals are going to take over at their own 41. Oh, timing is everything on a route like this. He tried to drive that football into a tight spot. And if you're a little early or a little late, chances are there's going to be someone there. And sure enough, this one's going the other way. So now the Bengal offensive unit back out onto the field. They'll start in excellent field position following the INT. Here's Joe Mixon as they start on the ground. A good cover defensively as they get to him just beyond the 45 after the juke. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game. Here now, second and four. They're passing here. Joe Burrow, short throw to Smith. His fourth catch already in this first quarter. It's a first down. <laughs> I got a kick out of that one, partner. You and I talk often about trying to hide receivers in certain situations, but a guy of his size can't really hide him. But the tight end drag route, definitely an effective way to sneak him across the formation for an easy completion and a first down. A Burroughs throw complete there to Smith. And he's got this down a yard or two shy of the 40 before he's out of bounds. Partner took a while for him to lock onto a receiver, and he finally found his man coming left to right across the formation. But by the time he got the ball to him, not much of a chance to turn up field and make anything out of it. Now Burrow to throw on second down. Airing one out for Boyd. Touchdown! Tyler Boyd with his second touchdown in this opening quarter. And the Bengals have taken a 13-0 first quarter lead. Still first quarter, two receiving touchdowns for him. How are they going to slow him down? I think they're thinking about altering their game plan. Whatever they came in with, now maybe you switch a better cover guy to him. Or you make sure you have more people in his general area, wherever he lines up, to at least try and discourage them from throwing the ball to him. The previous play is under review. Did he keep those feet in bounds? That's the question they've got to decide. And I got to say, watching it in real time, it was awfully close. Yeah, it certainly looked like a heck of a catch because he didn't appear to bobble it, which could complicate things. But even with the benefit of replay, that's pretty tight. Well, here's the call. Extra point by McPherson, up and good. And it's now 14 to nothing. So that drive, four plays. And it's finished off by the touchdown from Tyler Boyd. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. Taking it about the one. And good coverage there on special teams as they'll get him down shy of the 20. With the football going back over now to the Cleveland Browns. They find themselves in a good size hole here and a good size hole early on in this game as they come up on first down. They start on the ground with Nick Chubb. This will be a short gain of three before he's brought down at the 22. We haven't seen much from him running the football here in this first quarter. No, you're right about that. We haven't seen much of him at all so far. They've stacked him up pretty well, but when you're trying to run the football, sometimes you got to play the long game. Keep handing it to him, and some of those runs that aren't working now, they turn into six, seven, eight, and maybe more later on. Faking the give, now Watson. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. Well, that was his first target of the game, and it's going to take at least one more target to get him on the board. Took a nice, substantial hit to jar that catch loose from him. Incomplete pass. 
They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. Watson now to throw. Oh, and his early struggles continue. Here's another one intercepted. And he will bring it back. It's a pick six for a Bengals TD. Charles, it is pretty rare that we see a team build this kind of lead in the opening quarter. And, man, they seem to be clicking on all three phases right there. The defense doing its part with a pick six. And it's absolutely been the definition of a start that you would pick for yourself and for your team, right? And I have a feeling that they just want to stay in this zone. What's truly incredible about this start is they can add on a couple more scores. This one could legitimately be over in the second quarter. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. So how about this for a start? 21-0 here in the first as they kick this one away. And he takes this near the 25, just a little pass there, call it the 26. Ready to take over again on offense, out comes Cleveland. And not the first time that they're coming back out off of a turnover, but the last one really hurt Charles with that pick six. And it feels like the whole team's infected right now, doesn't it? It's not just been one person. It's kind of been a group effort where the mistakes have happened. Can they put that aside, kind of start over, and put together a nice drive? I feel like I could see what he was thinking on that carry. He wanted to follow that big tackle through the hole. Ended up only getting four yards on the carry. I think he had designs on that one being bigger. Second down, here's Chubb again. And some space here. And they will finally get to him down at the Bengals' 38-yard line. Better than a 30-yard gain as we wind down towards 30 seconds left in the quarter. Exactly what they needed right there because they needed to use the ground game to take some pressure off because the quarterback's been struggling a little bit. So how about that for a chain mover? They're all the way down inside the 40 now for first and 10. Now it's Watson. He'll get this to Chubb out of the backfield. Call it a gain of a yard, and it'll be second down. Twenty-one, nothing. Our score after one. On to the second from Cleveland. It's the Browns in control of the football. Now second and nine, as they've got it. As we resume action, Watson. And this is going to be caught, but they'll say out of bounds. So it's incomplete. Some of the fans here don't seem too happy about what we've seen in this first half. No, not at all. And I understand why they've looked lethargic, out of sync, and it shows on the scoreboard. So third down, they need to get to the 28 for a first. Back to throw, Watson. And this is going to be incomplete. And that'll bring up fourth down as his Cincy defense stands up on third. Problems on third down so far in this first half. Relatively small sample size, but they're now 0 for 3. And the average in the league, somewhere around 40% on third down for offenses. So what's the answer to this? Either convert them or don't get the third down in the first place. Get your big chunks of yards on first and second down. And that is no good. And this will stay a three-touchdown game. So it's a second missed field goal here in this first half. He'll have to think about that going forward. Maybe time for a little soul searching as well. Yeah, the head coach might be looking towards the heavens because you wonder if this will affect the fourth down decision making going forward. If you get fourth and three, fourth and four, situations that used to be calls for the kicker 
might get a second thought. So after the missed long field goal attempt, this offense set up nicely at the 44-yard line. The drive will commence with a run by Mixon. And he'll manage to pick up about four at second down. The passing game's been working quite well so far, but the running game's been a little bit of a struggle, and that's a surprise to me. Typically, when you can throw it, you've opened up lanes for your runners. From the 48-yard line, here's second and six. Once again, they run with Mixon. And he's down right around midfield after a gain of two, maybe three. He's definitely tough to get down. We just saw it right there. But how about what we did see? Pursuit, wrap up, and then the big finish with the tackle. It looks like a nickel set now for the Browns on third down. From midfield now, Burrow to mix it on the check down. So he fought off the tackle, and that effort gives him the first before he's brought down. The drive stays alive, a third down gain of eight. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz scheme, and you can drop anyone out of your defensive front, defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. Here's second and five now from the 37. Here's Burrow. Got a man open. It's Chase. And he's brought down at the 19 after a gain of 19. First down in the red zone. And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage. So timing is everything. This time he waits for his man to come open, puts it right on him, and they pick up a first down. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. Now Burrow. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. And I think they'd be well served to take that type of a physical approach against him the rest of the game. He's had his way so far. But on that last one, that worked quite well for the defense. Second and 10. To the air again, Burrow. And that'll be caught. Touchdown, Bengals. It's Tyler Boyd. A great play there. On his way to a monster game. Three first-half touchdowns. And the Bengals continue to pull away here this first half. Well, you talk about a team coming into an opposing stadium and just taking the life right out of a crowd. That's what we're witnessing here. 27 nothing, Charles. And this defense, they've just looked completely unprepared for what's been thrown at them. And you know they're supposed to adjust series to series. That has not happened for them. So I don't think halftime adjustments are going to help a heck of a lot. They are in major trouble unless they figure out something really fast. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. And this taken in at the goal line. And he had no room to run as he's tackled down inside the 20. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. And they've got to be a little bit frustrated about that last drive, missed field goal. Always hurts a team because, you know, you've put something out there, you've given yourself a chance, you're in range, and the ball doesn't go through the post. But it's not something to panic about, I don't believe. Just keep playing and keep going. 
Give him 10 yards there, and about by the nose of the football, he's going to have a first down. It's been a very one-sided game so far. they got to change what they're doing right now, don't they? You can't wait till the halftime speech to make an adjustment. No, you can't, because if you're doing it right, you're adjusting from series to series, and they need a big adjustment here to try to put some points on the board. Now this one complete downfield on the left side. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. Give him 30 yards there. And that might be exactly what they needed to wake up this home crowd. They haven't given them much to cheer for so far. And never underestimate the effect the home crowd with you can have on a game. Now a first down throw. Watson. This short pass into the hands of Njoku. Short completion, just four yards, and it'll be second down. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on. Catching the ball and not much run after the catch. From the 37, they work on second and six. Now it's Watson, a bootleg. And he drops it incomplete, and their struggles continue here. You've always been very good about checking my math. Am I correct? That's the first time that it's been incomplete when they've thrown it to him? Yes, he had caught every other ball coming his way. So they feel like they've got something really good going there, and they're going to continue to go there until the defense makes an adjustment and takes it away. Well, they finally made an adjustment there. We'll see if they can build on that stop. And now the third down throw incomplete as well. As his old brain remembers, when I see five wide receivers on the field as a defender, I know the ball's coming out hot. They expected it and got there and popped it free. So now on comes the field goal unit, and wow, this is no ordinary try here. This from 54 yards away. He's got the distance, but it's no good. Wide to the right, and they will remain well, well behind. And it's hard to hold a kick from this distance against him, but that is now three misses for him in the game so far. Three! And you wonder where his head's at right now. Kickers are a funny breed, but I have a feeling he'd love to see a 29-yarder next time to get him back in the groove. They'll start here with a give to Mixon. Oh, a nifty juke there. Not much fun for a guy trying to tackle him. To about the 48-yard line. Brandon, we just saw the benefits of being able to run the ball successfully. They pick up four yards on that carry. So now, if you're a play caller, you can do just about anything you want. But on the defensive side of the ball, you scramble a little bit. Now you're behind trying to figure out, do I need to blitz him? Do I need to pressure him? How do I gain an advantage on this snap? And he's taken down. This will be a Brown sack. Miles Garrett, that is now two sacks for him here in this first half. Chalk that one up to bad acting, I guess, because they certainly failed to sell the handoff, and the pressure stayed keyed in on the quarterback. No Oscar awards for this offense, just a loss of yardage. So that'll leave Burrow and the Bengals with a third and long after that sack we just saw. On play action, they'll throw. He's got his target. That's complete. And he is going to have a Bengals first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Let's just call it what it is. This has been a flat-out struggle for this defense all game long. They've really had a hard time slowing them down. And while I'm not big on speeches and guys jumping up and down, they might need their team leader on defense to get in their face right now and light a fire under these guys. They've got to start playing better assignment football and start getting guys on the ground. Meanwhile, Burrow's throw caught by Higgins. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. It's a gain of nine brings up second and a yard at the 34-yard line. From the 34-yard line, here's second down and one. Now it's Burrow. Quick slam caught by Chase. And Chase going to pick up a Bengals first down as the tackle is made right at the 25-yard line. The LSU connection, Burrow to Chase for the Cincinnati first.
Burrow going to give this to Mixon. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut. And he's a guy that has some height to him. So when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. Back to Mixon on second down. And he's able to work it here to the eight-yard line. And hold on here, because on that last run, it looks like we have a player who was shaken up. While they come out and take a look at him, we will step aside for just a moment. Here's Burrow setting up to throw it. He'll drop this one down to mix it. They'll get this halfway home from the eight to the four on a gain of four. He's already proven to be a factor in the running game on this drive. Now he gets involved in the passing game. I think what we're seeing here is the modern version of workhorse in the NFL, being able to run it and catch it with equal proficiency. Mixon is into the end zone for a Bengal touchdown. So this now 34 to nothing with the extra point pending. And Charles, I thought these guys might have the advantage coming in, but I didn't expect this. Well, I'm glad we're going with full transparency here because I didn't either. I thought we might be looking at a 24 to 20 type game, maybe 13, 10 at the half. But this has been total, utter domination. Extra point by McPherson, up and good. And that makes this 35 to nothing now. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. And it'll come out to the 25 as he will not attempt to return. Heading out as a Cleveland offense now as they get set to take over here. And the last time that they were on the field, a little demoralizing. Missed field goal. You know, always feel like you want to get it in the end zone, but then, oh, well, at least we're going to get three didn't go through the goalpost, so. It does test the mental processes of a team, though, doesn't it? Because when you miss a field goal, it's amazing how fast they want to turn on the guy kicking the ball. But you need to keep his confidence up because how many times have we seen games where it comes down to the stretch? And guess what? You need that guy to make the big kick for your team to move on or to win a game. Make sure you keep him happy. Make sure you keep him comfortable. I'm sure you always treated the kicker nicely, though, right? You know, truthfully, I did. Good. I always did because those guys, they won us a whole lot of games. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. Fifth catch of the afternoon, and that gives him a first down. Now that's the kind of big play you'd like to see. This first half, it hasn't gone their way, and they could use a shot in the arm, something to perk them up a bit. And they get one here in the passing game. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Here's Watson. Right back to Njoku. So the completion good for six yards. And that will bring up second down. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice easy pitch and catch. Hoping he could break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Second down and four. To the air yet again, Watson. Under pressure now, Watson, and down he goes. Trey Hendrickson, that is now two sacks for him here in this first half. And this offense continues to shoot themselves in the foot. And here, another sack. All game long, we've seen missed assignments, which have led to turnovers, sacks. This group has not played well at all here in the first half. Throwing on third down, Watson. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete.
We remind you that coming up at halftime, Jonathan Coachman will be alongside. He'll have highlights and analysis from Orlando of this first half of action. Watson's throw taken in by Cooper here. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. 11 more yards that go around, a first down as well. Well, there's no disputing. He's made some poor throws in this first half, but this was a good one. And you can bet this is an offense that isn't going to pull back. They believe in what he can do. So all you can do is look forward, and they pick up a first down. Over the middle and into the hands of his receiver, Moore. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. Now second and three. They'll try the draw now with Chubb. And he's able to work his way down inside the red zone to the 19-yard line. 55 yards rushing for him now on just six carries to this point. Some big plays in the passing game on this drive, and here's one out of the running game. So the passing game loosening things up. Now there's room to roam. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. From the red zone now, Watson. Going out wide, finds Chubb. Now the Browns signal for the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 27 seconds remaining here in the second quarter. Second and a couple. Now Watson. Quick throw here, that's complete. Yeah, the Browns are going to be looking at first and goal as they move this down to the four-yard line. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up a first down. And with just four seconds left in this first half, a timeout call. So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field. From the left half, should be a fairly easy one here. York able to send this one through. So a long drive gets him down inside the five, but ultimately they settle for just the field goal. And I have to think that if maybe they were a yard closer, that would have made their decision tougher, and I think they likely would have gone for it. But in this situation, they just decided to take the three, and I think it was a smart move. So barring a touchback, this likely the final act of the half as the kick is away. So we have reached halftime here, and it's the visiting Bengals out in front. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. Back to you guys in a bit. But first, we welcome everyone to our EA Sports Halftime Report. It was Joe Mixon who had it working in the first half. He had a touchdown run that helped get his guys this halftime lead. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three.
The Browns going to see the football first, but they trail here as we resume play on EA Sports. And he won't quite make it to the 25. Here's the Browns offense now getting set to start off this third quarter. A CD, they certainly know the hole that they face as they begin the second half. They have to do what precious few teams have done in NFL history. Let's try to come back from a four-possession deficit. And, partner, you know as that team gathers, they're saying to each other, you never say never, right? Because if you're on an NFL roster, that's how you have to think. You can always come back and win a ball game. And let's face it, we saw a certain Super Bowl, a 25-point lead late that wasn't enough to put someone away. But that being said, this task is near impossible. Let's face it. And bottom line is, it officially becomes impossible if this possession is an empty one. Watson on first down. It's caught, Cooper. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. He continues to deliver a first down here. He had four catches in the first half, and this one number five. Well, still in the third quarter here. Now, you look at the scoreboard, that deficit probably a little too much to overcome, but completions like that may be something to build on for future weeks. Yeah, it's all about ending things on a strong note here, isn't it? Because my mindset is it's a new ball game from here to the end. Make sure it's a good one and close it out. He'll wind up getting right about four there on the scramble, and it's second down. I think the defense surprised him there with that blitz on first down, but give him credit. Stayed cool under pressure and still found a way through the extra rushers for positive yardage. Well done. Second down and six now. To throw is Watson. And he's got the hook up to Moore. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. It'll be a gain of five. And that'll leave him with a third and just a yard. So they just need one yard here to pick up the first down. They'll run for it. Here's Chubb. And he's going to have the first down yardage to the 35. A third down gain of three yards, and that'll be enough. That's a tremendous group effort there, because when you talk about offensive lines, the best ones, talk about guys that play in harmony, in sync, and getting things done, and they did that on that play. Yeah, especially on third and one. Got to be in sync, and they were. They run again on first down, Chubb. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. But if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. Second and six. Here's Watson. This is caught, and they are able to stop him, but he does take it all the way to the two. That one nearly 30 yards, 29 officially. A lot of ground left to make up, obviously, a lopsided contest, and we're already in the third quarter. Now, they won't get it all back in one play or one drive. That's cliche, but it's true, Charles. If they can just maybe get plays like that and get a little momentum built, they can get the scoreboard a little closer. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Logan Wilson, the one who got in there and dropped him to the ground. That I'm struggling to understand a little bit. That close to the goal line, first down, run the football. If you want to throw it, throw some play action on second down. So first down went the wrong direction. They're at the 13-yard line. Here's second and goal. Up the middle, it's Chubb. And power running here down to the six-yard line. 85 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. Defensively, I think they can smell a stop ball right around the five here, brings up third. And I think what they've done is they put doubt in the minds of the offensive guys. What do we do? Because now you don't have a go-to play. Either side they pick, throwing it, running it, it won't be easy. Flushed out right. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Cleveland. Deshaun Watson, a six-yard touchdown run. And the Browns are able to make 
some inroads here to that deficit. And Deshaun Watson shows off his mobility yet again. Just one touchdown rushing in six starts last season. But the way that he moves around, if receivers are covered, he'll tuck it and go as he did there. Extra point by York is up and good. And that will cut this lead down to 25. York ready, and here we go as he sends this one away. No run back here, down to a knee, and this drive will start at the 25. So here are the Bengals now as they get their first possession of this second half. And the first half definitely went their way, and this would seem to be a great opportunity to kind of put this game a little closer out of reach with a score here. Yeah, and it's a wonderful opportunity for them because if they can add seven more to their lead before the other guys even see the football, that could be the decisive blow in this game. I think that's how they're eyeing it. That's how they're approaching it. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. On second down, Burrow. A quick throw there is incomplete. I would describe the way that he's played today as mature. He's already moved on mentally from that incompletion, and he's more than ready to throw his next pass downfield. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. Here's Burrow. Throw out wide is incomplete. Yeah, that's a nice job there defensively to blanket those receivers on third down. And as a quarterback, all you can do is just loft one toward the bench, not too close, mind you, and live to punt the football. The Bengals bring out their punter now as he'll kick it away for the second time. Pulled in at the 24. A 40-yard punt, five yards on the return. And that will come the offense as they take over. The Browns offense heading back out to take possession. We haven't exactly been treated to a nail-biter in this one, CD, and if they cannot score here, this one's pretty much all but over. Are you saying that you feel like people are starting to think about getting out of here and maybe beating the traffic in order to get home or to their final destination? Uh, yeah, I don't think there's a whole lot of reason to hang around, especially if they can't score here. Yeah, you're right about that because it has been pretty clear who the better team has been in this one. And in a league that we talk about every game being a one-score game as we go into it, watching this blowout, it's, let's just say it's been unusual. To throw on second is Watson. And he will slide to a stop. He does have the first down. It's an eight-yard pickup and leads to a new set of downs. As he came to the line of scrimmage, he knew he didn't need much to reset the chain. So when he saw the space he needed, no hesitation. He went to the marker and got his guys a first down. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Now it's Watson. And that's going to be caught by Peoples-Jones. And he's brought down. That'll move the sticks for the Browns, a gain of 12. Well, the margin on that scoreboard, obviously, for them, it looks daunting. But I don't know, Charles. They're probably not focused on that right now. Maybe just chaining together a positive drive with plays like we just saw, giving themselves something to build on. Yeah, I think you're right about that. And what they have to be careful of is getting glued to that scoreboard, trying to do too much. Because if you do that, you're all but guaranteed to start making mistakes. Just focus on one play at a time and make each one successful. 103 yards rushing now for Chubb and a first down as well. Boy, where would these guys be without his performance on the ground? That puts him over 100 yards now for the afternoon, and I tell you, he seems to be getting stronger as the day goes along. On first down, Watson. Oh, he dropped it. And that's pretty indicative of the way this one's gone. At this point in the game, in the situation they're in, partner, these incompletions that we're seeing, they need to turn into positive snaps and soon. 
Here's second and ten. Throwing again is Watson. That pass complete to Moore. And he'll go down at the 26, following a gain of six. I always laugh when people say, what's the toughest route to defend? And I'm like, any of them, especially if it's a good receiver, that makes things very difficult. But when you're running a drag route, something short, shallow, going through defenders, using guys almost as, as screens in order to get open, that makes things tougher, guys trying to get to the football. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he is going to have a Browns first down as he'll be marked down a yard or two past the marker following a gain of six. But with the score where it is, you're not thinking field goals right now. You need touchdowns. So that was a much-needed conversion there on third down. So here's a first and ten now down inside the 20. And trouble trying the middle here. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Not too many offenses want to turn down long drives, but when you're down what they are, they've got to pay it off with some points. Two yards to go, second down. saying to himself, how did that not wind up a touchdown? Remember, he just need the tip of the ball across the plane. It's not going to get there, but they're going to be set up in great shape with first and goal. Chubb will score. Touchdown, Cleveland. Well, nothing fancy there, Charles. You had three tight ends on the field. They were going to run the football. The defense knew it, but the defense couldn't stop them. And I haven't met an offensive line yet that doesn't get more satisfaction out of running the football into the end zone than pass protecting. They had determination on their side, and they got it done. Extra point by York is up and good. And that'll cut the lead down to 18. ready and here we go as he sends this one away from a yard or two deep here comes a return and no chance to get away as they'll get him down at about the 17 yard line Cincinnati now ready to take the field still operating with a comfortable lead despite the score a moment ago as they begin first and ten Burrow will throw throw left side complete to chase Call it a gain of six on the play, and it'll be second down. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here, and if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up a score. On second down, here's Burrow. Connecting on the out route here with Higgins. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. And now timeout is whistled as it appears there's a Brown shaken up on the play. So as the medical staff takes a look, we'll step aside. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Now it's Burrow. It connects quickly to Jamar Chase. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. That was a nicely run slant route. And what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route. 
and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. Burrow's throw here into the hands of Boyd. And Boyd going to pick up a Bengals first down as he'll be brought down just shy of midfield. His big game continues. Already has the three touchdown grabs, tacking on some more yardage and a first down. And how precise has his route running been in this game? We just saw him get open yet again, and he's also made adjustments as the defense has tried to really stop him. Mixon with a first down carry. And a good run here as he'll rumble all the way down to the 40-yard line. 53 yards on the ground for him now on nine carries. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. So a first and ten upcoming from Brown's territory now, right at the 40. Burrow looking to pass. He'll drop this one down to Mixon. And he's going to get this inside the 30. 11 more on that one and another first down. And while we may be looking at the scoreboard, this offense certainly is not because they're showing no signs of backing down, even with a three-score lead here in the third quarter. I think they keep taking their shots. They've seen blown leads happen throughout this league. They don't want to fall victim to it themselves. And they're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Inside handoff to Mixon. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And, and I know it sounds crazy. But they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. Back to Mixon on second down. And he's going to take this down close to a first down at the Browns' 20-yard line. A gain of three last play. This time they double it and pick up six. They're in pretty good spot right now with a convincing lead. I think this is where they put on the boxing gloves and start to try and pound them into submission. And the offensive line, they've controlled this game. I don't see why that trend would change now. They give to Mixon to try to pick it up. And they work this near the five. He'll be stopped at the six. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. As I take a look at the clock, I realize that this drive is eating up a good portion of the fourth quarter already. Got to tell you, partner, when you're trying to salt away a game, this is exactly what it's supposed to look like. And they've got three tight ends here on first and goal to add some extra mass. And now they will throw it with Burrow. Finds Mixon near the sideline. So no gain on the play, and that'll set up second and goal. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained, so they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. Now Burrow to throw on second down. That's to Chase. He's got it. Touchdown, Cincinnati. It's a six-yard touchdown pass as his guys have opened up a very comfortable lead. Boy, he has been fun to watch throwing the football in this one. It's certainly not fun for that defense, though, Charles. Now up to four touchdown passes in this ball game. Yeah, we're supposed to be neutral, but I'm feeling their pain right now because he has absolutely carved up this secondary. A clinic on how to attack a defense and take them out of the game. Extra point by McPherson, up and good. And they open the lead up now to 25.
After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. Cleveland offense making their way out. Well, this game, it has had no shortage of offense. They've been able to put up a decent amount of points on this side, Charles. They just have not been able to keep pace with the other offense they're going against here. Yeah, it's a good way of pointing things out because now it's not a total loss because, as you said, they've scored some points, so there's some plays they can build on, moments where the game plan actually worked. But overall, though, they were just out personnel. They were going up against a team that's playing at an elite level. And the ball on the 30, here's second and four. Watson now to throw. Right back to Njoku. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. And he's the epitome of what we call the move tight end, a guy that you can line up anywhere, in the slot, out wide, in tight. Doesn't really matter because he has such great skills. You want to utilize him in all aspects of your passing offense. And there he was in the slot for the catch. On first and 10, Watson. Going out wide, finds Chubb. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. So eight yards on the completion there, and they'll be left with second and a couple. To the air yet again, Watson. That incompletion is not a surprise with the way that this one has gone and the frustration of body language is evident everywhere. This team, they've really been put through the ringer in this one. The Browns on third down. They're at 50%, four for eight. Here it's third and two. They go up the middle with Chuck. And a strong run that time as he's across midfield and down to the 43. It's a gain of 10, and the Browns are going to get a first down. He's done his part sailing past the century mark on the ground with rushing yardage, but his team, a different story. Yeah, they're down big in this ball game, so sometimes you wonder to yourself how much of that is him with a great performance and how much of that is the defense just loosening up because they have a big lead. And he gets this down inside the 35 before going out of bounds. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And they'll be left with a second and about a foot. When you run a screen pass really well, you got to like the look of it because so many parts come together to make it work well. The offensive linemen where they're faking people out, the back slipping out there, catching the football, then all of them going together as one unit downfield. A really nice pickup. Now a second down throw for the end zone, but it's incomplete. That's coverage you'd expect to see in a tie game late. Not in a lopsided game like this. They are not letting up. This will be the eighth play of the drive, and it's third and inches. Now Watson. They set up the screen to Chubb. And he is going to have the Browns first down by a couple of yards as they're able to convert there on third and one. And that's a gutsy call there on third and short because that's a play that's got a good chance of being blown up in the backfield for a big loss of yardage. But nice job out wide to gather in that screen pass, use his blockers well, and pick up the first down. Here's Watson, option left. And he'll take this inside the 30 to about the 29, maybe the 28-yard line. Give him three on the keeper there, and it is second down. Typically on the read option play, when we talk about responsibilities, we're talking about what the quarterback has to go through. How about the inside linebacker, though? His job on this play, shadow the quarterback and hold him to a short gain. Did it to perfection. To throw is Watson. That's complete to Peoples-Jones. And he's got another first down as the tackle is going to be made at the Bengals 16. 11 yards for number 11. And this has been a nice answer to the touchdown drive against them a few minutes ago because they've come out and reestablished the tempo. A nice throw there. And they're putting together a very strong drive as a response. They give the chub out of the gun. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. 
No gain on the play there. Second down. They've called his number a lot this afternoon. You wonder how much tread is left on those tires. We certainly do, but I always think back to one of my favorite coaches in the NFL. And he used to have a meeting with his running backs every year in the offseason and say, look, as many times as you're going to carry the ball, you should be able to carry it one more time. So make sure you get in shape. And running room scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. Well, for that being an option play, there really weren't too many options available for him, were there? No, there weren't. And at least he was able to get back to the line of scrimmage. So they didn't lose anything, but you're exactly right. Nowhere to go. On third down, it's Nick Chubb. And they're going to lose some on this play. Being knocked back to the 18. Nothing doing there as the 13th play of the drive proves to be unlucky. Well, Brandon, he's had a great day, but sometimes the other guys make a play against you. What's that expression they like to use in the NFL? Those guys get paid, too, you know. Yeah, in college they say, hey, they're on scholarship, too, in the NFL. They're getting paid, too. With the day he's had, you can have one go in the wrong direction. Desperation time. Watson on fourth down. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. The Browns unable to move the chains on fourth down. And this long drive is going to wind up yielding nothing. So the defense has to stay out and get one more stop. They were able to do it, forcing the incompletion. So on their record, that goes down as a successful play. It doesn't matter how they got there, how it happened. They got it done. They're the ones that are jubilant. And he'll manage to pick up about four at second down. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead, positive game. Just keep that clock ticking. From the 22 now, here's the second down and six. Again, it's Mixon. And they're able to get this one across the 35. They'll get 14 on that one. Good for a bangle first down. No doubt those are the types of carries they're looking for here, Charles. The lead in the fourth quarter. This is when coaches that have a reliable running game, they breathe a little easier on the sideline. Yeah, they love the idea that they can take the air out of the football at this point of the game. That means they're really counting on that offensive line, counting on the runners, taking care of the football. Because you're going to tell your quarterback, hey, no time to be a hero. We're not going to throw it here. Just eat up that clock. And if you have the ball, they can't score. Yeah, another good run there. He's been such a big part of their success here this afternoon. And that last carry, it puts him over 100 yards now for the day. On second down, here's Mixon. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. Well, that's a carry they have to be satisfied with. And throughout this game, they've been satisfied with what he's given them. Whenever they've needed a big run, a first down, he's the guy they've turned to. And it doesn't matter what the defense thinks. They feel like they've got the confidence to keep handing it to him and keep picking up good yardage. They try to eat some clock with Mixon. And the ball is knocked out. And now this ball picked up by the offense. But here in the final two minutes of the game, this will be blown dead. Only the fumbler can advance the football. So this will go back to the spot of the fumble itself. And now before the ball changes hands, they're going to take a look at this just to make sure that they have it right. So that one overturned. They say the knee was down, and that will not be ruled a fumble. Mix it up the middle. And he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 40. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. As many games as the two of us do, I would hope that one day we'll be able to solve this riddle. Why is it on a hot day that one team has more trouble with the heat than another, and especially when you can't stop a guy running the ball. You know it's September in the booth, though, when you and I have both removed our coats, and those <laughs> were gone in the first quarter. They were gone in the first quarter, and what we're watching now is a defense mentally giving in and sagging a little bit because they haven't been able to stop him. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. Offensive line really didn't give him any room to maneuver on that play. Things closed pretty quickly, didn't they? And how about the wrap-up at the end of that tackle? Left no doubt there would be no additional yardage to be found. 
Again, it's Mixon. And give him six yards here as he stopped near the 35 at the 34. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. So this one in the win column now for the Cincinnati Bengals. And it was a game where they were off and running in the first quarter, Charles, and never looked back. You know, partner, after a while, we always say the same thing, don't we? They set the tone early, right? They started fast. So I asked a few of my horse racing friends, do you have a term for me that we can use to cover that? And they said, yeah. When a horse breaks out like that, you say he caught a flyer out of the gate. And that's exactly what this team did today. I mean, they jumped out there, jumped on them, and were never headed.